Okay, so the next discussion we need to have is a discussion around what kind of ventilator settings do I need to use? Well, the ventilator settings are going to vary a little bit from person to person, but some important points. Volume control ventilation is not going to be optimal. Well, none of this is optimal, but volume control ventilation is going to be particularly suboptimal. I would strongly suggest that you put these patients in pressure control ventilation, right? Because with volume control ventilation, you don't know how much of that volume is going where. Pressure control, I feel, is probably going to be a much safer option for these patients. And then it's going to depend on how critical the patients are, right? If, say, we have a patient with fairly mild injury that we're intubating and we match those two patients up, you're probably going to go, want to go with an FiO2 of around 50 to 60. Let's go into a pressure control here. So 50 to 60. Um, Respiratory rate is going to vary a little bit. Remember, these patients have an ARDS-like picture. Uh, their compliance may not be as poor as some ARDS patients, but they are PEEP dependent. So I would suggest going with um, at around 10 of PEEP to start with. All right. And let's go back to pressure control here. So 10 of PEEP, peak inspiratory pressure of about 20, uh, FiO2 of about 0 0.5. All right. So that's if we're going with mild injured patient. A moderate injured patient, uh, you're probably going to want to go up a little higher on the FiO2, you know, 50, 60, 70 uh, percent perhaps. You might need to go a little higher on the pressure. Uh, probably want 12 to 14 of PEEP. And your peak pressure, you're probably going to want to go 25 or so on your, um, your PIP, your peak inspiratory pressure right around there. Okay, these are just general guidelines. Um, if you have a fairly uh, patient that needs a substantial amount of support, you're probably gonna look at even higher FiO2s, say somewhere around uh, 0 0.8 for the FiO2. Right. Somewhere around 0 0.8 for the FiO2. Uh, somewhere around uh, you know, 17, 18 for your PEEP. You know, getting fairly high on the PEEP, and then somewhere around 30 for the PIP. Um, in general, you don't want to go higher or have sustained um, pressures higher than about, about 30 with PEEP compensation, and you run into volume trauma, barrel trauma, uh, things of that nature. And then if you have a, if you have a patient who is extremely refractory, then um, you're going to look at uh, similar settings, but more than likely what you're going to want to do is institute something called inverse ratio ventilation, where the I to E ratio, where you spend uh, more time in the inspiratory phase than the expiratory phase. So your I to E ratio uh, generally is like one to two, one part of the time you're inhaling to two parts of the time exhaling. Um, one to two to one to four, one to six even if you have an obstructive lung pathology. Um, but in these patients, you may need to um, increase the eye time, right? You may need to, uh, generally, you're in a general adult patient, somewhere around 0 0.8 to about one second is a fairly normal eye time. Uh, you may need to increase that eye time, right, to get an I to E ratio that's, that's inverted, like a two to one I to E ratio. And then in, in, in real sick patients, there are actually some specialty modes I've mentioned uh, in prior videos, APRV, um, and I actually have a video on setting this ventilator up in APRV, so you can reference that if you need. And in fact, you could do split ventilation in APRV as well. Um, and actually, as long as the patients are spontaneously breathing, uh, that might be a reasonable mode for them. However, if you are not running APRV, and you're running just kind of the run-of-the-mill um, pressure control ventilation, a critical concept is these patients may have different underlying respiratory rates, right? And so they're going to be triggering this ventilator um, at different times, and, and that's potentially dangerous. So if you are running just kind of more of a standard pressure control uh, setting, you're not you're not going to want to have this ventilator interacting with those patients. You want the ventilator to do everything. You don't want the patients triggering the ventilator and causing problems. Um, and so lots of ventilators, unfortunately, don't allow you to do this effectively because most ventilators do interact with the patient to some extent. 
And really what you would like to have is a, is a true CMV mode, and CMV stands for Controlled Mechanical Ventilation. Unfortunately, most of these your modern ventilators, even if they say CMV, right? So you see how this ventilator says CMV here? This is actually not CMV, this is assist control, right? So it may say CMV, but it's not the real OG CMV um, where the ventilator is not interacting with the patient. So some things that you might need to do to offset that in this particular ventilator, I can go to my, um, my additional settings and I have got my trigger settings here, right? You may need to bump that trigger way up and make it super difficult for the patient to uh, trigger the ventilator, um, to essentially lock the patient out from the ventilator by making the trigger really high. Otherwise, these patients will start breathing and start triggering this ventilator and it can be chaos. Now, if that doesn't work, you may need to heavily sedate these patients, right? So you may need to give them a large doses of opioids and add in you know, propofol infusions or dexmedetomidine, you know, things like that to uh, prevent those patients from overriding the uh, ventilator if you have a ventilator that does not do true CMV, which a lot of them don't, even though they say it may be CMV. Uh, and then as a last resort, Right, if you absolutely have to, this is not the best thing to do. It's not strongly recommended. It's not recommended at all. But if you have to, maybe look at adding paralytics into the mix as well. Okay, so hopefully you found this video helpful.